Hello everyone, I am Argama Witch, and today we are going to be doing, um, learning about hair bones. This is a question I get asked a lot. Um, also to start off with, if anyone's wondering, these textures on this model, um, are available over on my booth. They're all made by me. Uh, some of them are free, some of them cost like a buck or two, I don't know. So yeah, if you're interested in that, I'll try to leave a link down below. Um, <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about, uh, hair bones, because a lot of people ask me about that. And so I have a few things set up. So I have uh, a basic hairstyle like this, um, a ponytail, and then a longer hairstyle, along with some bangs. So we're going to do all of those, but, um, let's start with this one first, and the bangs, because, um, yeah. Alright, so... Over in this tab, the hair tab is bone groups. And I just got done doing the earring tutorial, so we'll just delete these because one's not fucking needed. Alright. Um, and this is what makes it move. Because right now, if you don't have any bones in it, if your character's walking or whatever, there's no movement whatsoever. You know, they, they tilt around, nothing. So what we're going to do is try to add some bounce to it. Um, and so let's start with this procedural hair group. Now, if you select the whole thing and create a bone, it's going to move the whole thing on these bones. And if you don't understand what these bones are, like each one of these is considered a bone. And have you ever seen those snakes, those toy snakes like these, that they each segment moves in order to kind of give it like a sneaky slithery motion? Well, it's basically the same thing. Think of each one of these joints as a bone. It's the same thing here. Um, so let's show that, um, let's just leave this as default and sh you'll see the whole hair kind of wiggles in a very weird way because it's all moving from that one spot. It's not a natural look. Yeah, so like, I mean, at, at bare minimum, that's fine, but we're gonna do a little better than that. We gotta do better than that. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is right click and delete this bone group because that's just... Mm, that's just... Mm -hmm. um, so when applying bones, you got to think about how you want the hair to move. So I, for things like this, I usually grab like two of the hairs at a time and you can just select them by clicking on them or coming over here and, you know, and I'll create a bone group. You know, let's talk about the bone parameters over on the side. Um, so the first one's the bone count. That's how many little joints are in there. The more you have, technically, the more movement you'll get, but you don't need that per se all the time. In fact, for the most part, I tend to stick between like one to four bones, and only when I'm going into longer hair do I add more. Um, the fixed point is where the top bone here is going to start, so everything above this is not going to move, and everything below will move. Stiffness is how stiff it is, gravity is how gravity will affect it, and then the hit radius is. How, how big the colliders are. So these balls here are colliders. So, you know, if there's another collider here, they're going to bounce into each other and they're going to interact like that. So, for... Quickly, we'll just show you what, what it looks like with two... Yeah, you can already see. Like, it's trying to get away from the head. <laughs> just huge colliders. Alright. Now when you come over here, you know, they're just kind of like way out there because they're trying to avoid everything else around them. So, but if they're too small, they'll clip through things. So you gotta find a nice balance. And usually when I tell people, you know, just kind of like, you know, think around. Figure it out yourself. You, you'll, you'll get the gist of how it works. Most people don't, don't really like hearing that, though. Alright, um, so for these hairs, um, I feel like I don't want anything to move past this point here. I want everything above here stiff and only the bottom part to kind of move, right? And if you select more than one hair, but you want it to follow a certain hair, like say I want it to follow this one, you can just set that as the axis and it'll curve to that. So this one's also going to move to this. It's fine. Um, you can have like a lot of movement with the three, but for this I would probably just do like a two. Because I'm not looking for much movement. Um, I don't really use too much of the gravity, and usually the stiffness is good where it is. 
And I'm going to do the same for this one. So we're going to two. I'm going to bring this back down to here. And the fixed point is going to be uh, right here where the bottom of the head is. And let me do that for all of these real quick. And uh, I'm going to try to do this real time. It's, it's not very time consuming. Uh, but it can be a little tricky. And the reason I do it in two clumps is because I feel if I did every single one, it might be a bit too much. Could be a bit too much. Um, and two still is a good flow. So two to three, depending on like how many you have. But yeah, right there is good. So let's go see what that looks like. Yeah, and so they kind of bounce. You can see separation between each of them. They're still clumped. You can tell they're clumped, but it's not too bad. And then, like, you know, if the head's turning, it's still doing its thing. And let me show you, like, if we add gravity to these. We're going to add, like, a, I don't know, like a 10 gravity here. And then on this one on the other side, we're going to do a 50 gravity, just so you can kind of get an idea. And this one, we're going to do a uh, low stiffness. And then this one we're going to do a high stiffness, just so we can see the difference. And this middle one will be our default. It'll be our, you know. So you can kind of see how the one with no sniffness is just sort of floating around doing its own thing. It doesn't really move like hair. It kind of moves like hair underwater. The gravity ones are moving with the head a bit more, but they're also a bit kind of like... A little flowy, a little jank. I don't know. It, they can be fine. It's not really how I would personally have this back hair look. And then you can see, like, no stiffness is floating and hard stiffness is barely moving. And then we have a little bit of movement from our base. So, like, adding a little gravity is fine. Um, if you get too much, it can really, like, it really mess with things. But anyways, that's, that's basically how we do this hairstyle. Let me, um... I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to turn these the other two on, because I can do both of these, all these at the same time. So let's go back to the bone group, and I'm going to just delete all these bone groups by just right-clicking and delete. Alright, so for the this hair here, the front hair, I'm going to do a bone group here. Uh, I'll do a two and I'm gonna bring it all the way down to about here because I don't want the top part to move if I'll show you what happens if you um, Like leave it all the way up there um, And for here like these things I don't really want this to go flopping up so you can see the forehead too much So if I create a bone group, it's only gonna be like a bone and I'm gonna bring it down to about here And it's just gonna give it the slightest bit of movement and I might grab a couple together, too, if they're close enough. And pull it down. I might have this one follow this right there. And I'm deciding where I want, like, the movements to start. So for these, let's take a look at what this looks like. So this only barely moves to about here, which is what I want, because I don't want to show off too much. But this one pulls up all the way up here which feels almost unnatural because uh, hair that would come down here is going to start growing from here and here and here and here so it's you're gonna get all these like different strands whereas here it's just showing like a huge clump from up top and something about that just feels not not normal uh, not a natural movement at least to me um, also you'll get clipping too so that's fine there's nothing you can do about that. Um, up here you can also see how the bangs have slight movement from that one bone. It's enough. It's enough to give it some sort of like dynamic movement. It's just a little bit, but it's, you know, enough for anime. If we decided we wanted to add like, let's take this one. We're just going to add like, I don't know, four bones to this. Now you can see it's just like flopping all over the place. It's like way too much movement in my opinion for something so small. So 
It's like a it's like a noodle just going all over the place. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's uh let's try to do something with this back here. All right, first we're gonna do the ponytail. Now, for the most part, when I do ponytails, um, yes, this one, I do the whole thing, the whole thing at once. Uh, unless there's a couple of strands coming off, in which I might do them separately. For the most part, I like to do them in one group because you're expecting the ponytail to move in like a single group. You could do multiple, but for me, this is how I do it. Um, I also pick the middle hair if I can grab it. And I'll set that as the axis because that is like our center point. My fixed point I want right at the uh, zenith of the hair, I guess, you will, if you will. Um, so that way it's not like, I mean, you, you can go all the way here, but right here is good. And I might increase the count just a little bit. And just a smidgen of gravity, but it's going to like kind of drop it down. And it's, you clip a little bit better with the gravity, but let's look at this. Alright, yeah, so that's pretty much how I would do, like, a ponytail here. So you can see it's kind of, like, moving a little bit. Let me show you, um, like, the walking. Yep. You can see it's still pretty stiff up here. If we go over here... Uh, bones. And let's say we put the fixed point all the way back here. See, now the whole thing's wiggling from here, and it looks a little peculiar. Um, at least to me, it... It feels like the, the point is inside the head somewhere. And it shouldn't move like that. I don't know. It, this is... Again, it's all preference. That's why I usually tell people to just kind of mess around with it. But, let's do that. And let's add more gravity. I'm gonna show you, like, high gravity on this. See, it just kind of, like, went limp noodle down here. The gravity strength is too much. So for things like this, again, you just sort of got to mess around with it, but this gives you a general idea of what you can expect. All right, now for long hair. Long hair, similar to the, like, short hair, I kind of just grab a couple strands at a time. And I pick, you know, I, I set one as my axis. And I decide where I want the flow to start. Like, I don't want the flow to start here. I want it, like, hmm, maybe here. I might increase the hit radius just a little bit on the ones closest to the shoulders. And I'm gonna raise this count to a five because it's longer, and I'm gonna do the same for the other side. I tend to try to parallel things. So that it's the axis. There. Mm. I'm not sure why that is bouncing out like that. It might be because it's just so close to the uh, shoulder, whereas that one's not as close, but that's fine. Um, Alright, let me grab some more and just create bone group. Just pick a hair, set as axis, fix point down, increase maybe to six. Create bone group, six. Bring it down, set as axis. And I might slowly move, like, where I want the stiffness as I go down. So, like, for here, I mean, the fixed point. So for here, I might want it more down here so it doesn't move as much. So I don't, actually don't need as many bones there either. So, like, right about there. And then for the last one, we'll just do, like, this. It's fine. Alright, and we're gonna go over to camera editor and we're gonna see how this all moves. So, the reason this one is out here is because of how close it is to the shoulder. And if you don't wanna, like, move the hair, because you can just move this hair, like, you can just grab it and just kinda, like. What is it? 
just pull it in and position it a little bit. Yeah. So you can kind of do that and it should, in theory, fix it a bit. Uh, I guess not really in this one. It had to call me a liar. But a way to fix it is, you know, turning down the hit radius. We'll turn it down to like zero. Yeah, it should be just a little better. Not much, but it's a little better. Um, but a lot of it is just fiddling with it until you can figure it out. Also, I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need that right now. Um, because there is no, like, easy, hey, this will magically fix all of your woes and problems. Uh, this is how you do everything in there. Also, what I did is, instead of making this the axis, I made this one, which is a little further away from the shoulder. So hopefully it won't... Yeah. So hopefully it won't shut out as bad. Yeah, so it's about as bad as the other one, which is fine. Which is mostly for when, like, um... Nope. Yeah, so when we get a twist like this, it'll go around the shoulder. Instead of, like, cutting through the shoulder. a little flowy. I like that's for me that's kind of fine. Um you can also check it like give it some wind or whatever and see how it's going to move and flow. Just to kind of test things out. But honestly, like a lot of this is just trial and error and fixing until what works for you because even if you follow the steps exactly like I did, if your hair's not like in the exact same style, in the exact same position, it's really not going to end up exactly like this. And you're going to need to adjust as you go. But again, to just basically give you a general idea is what you need to know over here is the bone count is how many segments there are to make it move. Uh, like, like these snakes. Do, 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 do. The more you have, the more like flowy it should move. Uh, the fixed point is where it's going to start the movement. Stiffness is how stiff it's going to be. Gravity is how gravity is going to affect it, or how hard gravity is affecting it. And then, like, um, hit radius is how big the colliders are. Now, uh, real quick, we can do something like... Let's take this one. Let's take the stiffness down to zero. Now, this is going to make it, like, super fucking floaty. And over this one, um, let's see what this looks like with all 16, right, uh, bones. So now we can just kind of go see what this looks like. So this one with, like, man, I don't even know, like, stiffness just went, did whatever. And this one with all the bones has turned into a goddamn snake. <laughs> All right, let me turn off the wind. We'll just do a walking. Yeah, you'll just see how like crazy this is. It's just like blah, 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 blah. And that's way too much movement. You don't need that. And this is way too stiff. Um, you could keep like messing with it. Uh, for example, we can take this stiffness down to this and the gravity up a little bit on this and now the hair is just kind of like flopped down because of the gravity so, so a lot of it's just like mess with it until you figure it out type of deal and I know that's really not what people want to hear but unfortunately that's sort of how this works um but yeah, uh, so anyways, I, that, that'll be it for this video tutorial. So uh, if you like this video, if it's helped you out at all, you can you know, give it a like. And uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. And uh, click subscribe if you have uh, big booba energy, you know.
If you got big boing boing energy, click that subscribe button. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Alright, bye!